I wanted to, to brief you up a little bit in terms of what our key messages uh, were as we went into the Moscow meeting. And I want to start first with uh, we really um, have as a priority to emphasize uh, the health in all policies approach. We think that's critical. We think that health sector has a critical role in all of this, but we need to be working with other government sectors if we're going to effectively address the NCD problem. Uh, we uh, would want to highlight the need for prevention as a first-line response. But also, I want to say very clearly, and we talked about this in Moscow, particularly uh, with the, the partner uh, community, that we also want a clear focus on control. And when we talk about control, we're talking about care and treatment. What I have up here is the list of major issues that got raised during that eight-hour session. And you can see there were multiple issues, some of them more contentious than others. Um, I want to talk about mental health. I mean, there was a lot of discussion about including mental health. There was discussion about this term non-communicable disease. And what, what does that mean? What's non mean? And should we be talking about the epidemic of chronic diseases? There's new language in the, the, the declaration about gender difference and a, a, a better focus on vulnerable populations. Very big focus on leadership at all levels, a whole government action. Um, and there was, a, there was discussion, and you're going to see language in there, about engaging the private sector, working more effectively with the private sector. So they're working with government and NGOs around solutions uh, in addressing the NCD problem. We have very clear language about accelerating the work around the implementation of the Framework Convention, um, strong encouragement um, to those countries that haven't ratified the convention. As you can imagine, there was um, some spirited discussion about international development agendas. There is language in the, in the declaration. It's not the strongest language, but it's there. Um, and really what it speaks to is um, international development agencies in countries making NCDs um, more of a priority. I guess I would uh, conclude that I think that from an NGO perspective, we achieve modest progress. And I say that because if you go, went into this sort of global meeting and while there were lots of um, calls and demands for specifics of disease of, of chronic diseases, there were some things that across the board, across each of the four diseases that were the priority for the global meetings, there were some things that I think NGO said pretty consistently. One, they wanted greater visibility. Two, they wanted greater accountability. Three, they wanted integration of NCDs in the development frameworks. And four, they wanted financing. So if you talk about each one of those things in terms of raising the visibility of NCDs, I think we can sort of check that box off. The consultative process was quite uh, robust. I think there is momentum for continuing to raise the visibility. The proof will still be in the pudding when we get there in terms of the participation of, um, of heads of state. Um, but I think we can say that we've made some, some, some real traction there in terms of raising this as a global issue. Um, in terms of holding governments um, and other development institutions accountable, I think, again, we've made some progress. There's progress still yet to be made in terms of that. Um, the um, global status report made by WHO will help us all with the baseline, as I had indicated earlier, but I still think that we're going to have to figure out how to do this. I think the good news uh, from our perspective is that there is kind of no longer real debate that NCDs impact upon development. I think that's been, uh, um, there's consensus about that. Now, how that then gets in, integrated into development programming, <laughs> development documents, and how development institutions take that on is going to be a continuing challenge and, and further conversations, in fact, going to be needed around that. And of course, around all of these meetings, funding always continues to be sort of um, the thing that will be, um, I think, that everyone will look to to see how we really get our hands around how do you really fund prevention and control of NCDs. I think there was pretty close to near consensus on the fact that um, the private sector that's engaged in the healthcare industry could play and has played historically a, a positive role um, in, in, in disease prevention and control. And so I thought that, that it didn't seem like there was much controversy around the fact that both um, private sectors who play, who introduce technologies um, and medicines and also who in, introduce medical technologies had a role to play and should be at the table in, in ongoing dialogues. 
I can't um, let the day go by without doing some tobacco specific um, uh, slides. So let me just say what I think happened in terms of tobacco control. Um, we were fairly successful, um, thanks in large part to a receptive um, colleagues on the US delegation team and making sure the outcome document actually reflected a commitment to accelerate progress on the framework convention on tobacco control. And also to call on governments who had not yet ratified the Framework Convention to in fact ratify the convention. So we're, we were pleased to get that language in there. Uh, we were also, again, pleased to get language in that sort of narrowed um, and made sure that the private sector language was not expansive but narrow and did not include the tobacco industry. And then lastly, I think a win for the tobacco control community was just that the Global Status Report really kind of highlighted why tobacco control policy change is a really good buy. First of all, it's cost effective and four out of the 10 um, best buys in the Global Status Report were, are, are tobacco control policies that are represented in the Framework Convention. And then lastly, kind of what's needed in terms of next steps, I think the real role for non-governmental organizations is to do what we have been doing so far, but going forward to continue to do that. Advocacy will be critical. Um, we will have to, as non-governmental uh, representatives in civil society broadly, do what we do best, which is to continue to try to um, express um, what we know and understand uh, by engaging uh, with a broad cross-section of people and making sure that governments ha hear that. Mm -hmm.